Today, I'll be showing you how to install bottles. In my opinion, this is the easiest way to run Windows executables on Linux. It's easier to manage than Wine and has a great user interface. So let's begin. First off, Bottles is only available as a flat pack right now. So in order to install a flat pack, you're going to need the package flat pack. If you want more information on what flat pack is, I do have a different video on that. But for the time of being, I'm going to assume you don't have flat pack installed and we're going to install that first. It's fairly easy here on Ubuntu. If you start up a terminal, you can type in sudo apt install flat pack. If you want to check if you have flat pack, just type in flat pack and see if it does anything or doesn't recognize the command. It will also spit this same thing out for you and you can copy and paste it if that's easier for you. You're going to press enter, type in your administrative password, and that will allow you to install Flatpak. Just press enter as the default option is yes to install it. Fantastic. Now we'll tell you anybody who's under the version of 18.10 when it comes to Ubuntu, you're going to have to add a repo in order to install it. Check out the link in the description below for more information on Flatpaks and in order to install that. Then the next thing, we're going to add Flathub as a repo. This is the best place to get flat packs from and by default it's not added so let's just do it by doing flat pack space remote dash add space we'll do an if not exists clause and then we'll do flat hub finally we'll have to point it to the correct location so https dl flat hub dot org slash repo slash flat hub dot flat pack repo again one of the best places to see and follow through with the same install instructions is at flathub.org. I'll put a link in the description below. Press enter, and then you'll be asked for an administrative password. And this is really the first step in order to set up Flatpak. Notice it does tell you that some Flatpaks will not in, will not appear on your desktop until the session is restarted. So you can reboot your computer at this point or restart your GNOME session, whatever is easier for you. But it's not necessary if we're gonna do everything through the terminal. So I'm gonna clear things out, and now I'm gonna go to the second part and actually install bottles as a flat pack. So as mentioned on Flathub, in order to install bottles, we just use this command here. I can copy this in, put it back in my terminal, and it's flat pack install flathub space com dot use bottles dot bottles. I press enter. It said it found a match and asking whether or not we want to install it. I press enter for yes. And now it's telling me all the permissions that bottles is going to require to run and all the things that need to be installed in order to properly get bottles. If you're okay with everything, just press enter. Yes is the default. And it's going to install the 15 items that are required to run bottles. Now this might take a few minutes as it does have to install 15 different things. You can see the progress as things are going with the check marks coming through and then showing you how much is currently downloaded out of whatever's actually left. Okay. And once the installation complete, it will tell you in which we can go to the second step and actually run our new flat pack. We can again do that through the terminal. I'll paste it in flat pack space run space com dot use bottles dot bottles. Pressing enter should start launching bottles directly from the terminal. Look at that starting up and we're welcomed by the tour for bottles. It says run Windows software on Linux. And here's the best part of Windows in bottles. It says bottles uses compatibility runners to provide isolated containerized Windows like environments where programs can run. Fantastic. I'm going to hit continue and let bottles set some things up. It's going to take a few minutes. You'll be able to actually see if you're running in the terminal in the background, what it's actually doing, which involves grabbing libraries that are necessary and installing them in order to properly run those windows programs that we're going to install. And once everything's set up and ready, it's going to give you the all ready and we can click start using bottles. All right. Now we're ready to start using bottles. Let me minimize everything else. Congratulations if you made it this far. Make sure to smash the like button as we're going to install our first app. And think about subscribing below. I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers. And now let's create a new bottle or containerized environment for Windows applications. I'm going to click on bottles and hit create new bottle. With that in mind, you can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to name it bottle one as you can have many different containerized environments for various different things such as applications, gaming, and even custom. Make sure that you actually choose the type of environment you want for the container because it will set up different dependencies and libraries. So the type of application can run smoother on the containerized environment. 
AKA, if you're gonna run a game, select gaming. If you're gonna run a regular application, select application. We're not gonna use custom, but you can see that you get to set your own information below if it's something that you already know needs to be set up for the container. Anyways, I'm gonna select application and hit create. Whenever you set up a bottle, it can take a little while because it's actually setting up the configuration and setting up the Windows environment in the background for that container. You can see it's installing things like DXVK, VK, D3D, and some dependencies, including fonts. Give it a few minutes to finish this up. Once things are done, you'll get this bottle created and we can hit close. Fantastic. Bottle one has been created. We are ready to use this to run our first application that's Windows based or an executable. Anyways, if we click here, we can hit run executable, which runs the containerized environment. We can do that, but before we do, let's install and run an executable. What's nice is they have this install programs button. This will give you access to programs that are created by the bottles community, AKA they're maintained and available directly from the community. There are some great things in here, including Steam for Windows, Epic Game Store, the EA launcher, many different launchers and shops for gaming. But what I'm going to actually install is Pokemon Infinity. Since this is a executable, I can hit install this program and hit start installation. What's gonna happen now is it's going to grab any other dependencies that it needs for this game and it's going to be installed along inside the container so that we can run things. Again, give it a few minutes as there could be quite a few dependencies that need to be installed. If you ever need to and you're running directly from the terminal, you can go back to the terminal and see what is actually being ran in the background. You can also, if something fails, grab the information and post it so you can try to troubleshoot what's going on. Or maybe it's just gonna clue you into something that you're missing. Anyways, that was a side note. Pokemon Infinity is now available in the programs view. So I'm gonna hit show programs. Notice now in bottle one, we have programs and we have this Pokemon Infinity program. You can click the play button next to it and that will actually launch the program. And look at that fantastic work. We have our first executable running in the background. Can it be played? Looks like we can. It's asking me to restart it just because it installed some new fonts. Fantastic. Let's see if we can roam around by starting a new game. All right, looks like we're interacting a bit. And look at this. The game is loaded and I am playing at this moment. I get to type in my name and continue on playing. How fantastic is this? We're running an executable, including a game directly on the current setup. Now I wouldn't suggest installing a game on an environment where we actually selected application. Like I said before, if you're gonna do a game, select the gaming environment. Anyways, I'm gonna exit out of here. I just wanted to show you how to install that first. But what if we wanna install a program that's not actually listed in the install programs? Well, we can do that too. And this is perhaps one of the best features of using bottles because it makes this super easy to do. I'm going to try and install Notepad++. A lot of people from Windows like using Notepad++. So it's a great thing to try out. I'm gonna select the newest Notepad++ and of course hit download, 64-bit version here. I'm gonna make note of where it's currently located. So it should be my downloads folder. I'll just verify, yep, home, downloads, fantastic. Now I'm going back to bottles. Inside of bottles, I'm gonna add a shortcut. I'm gonna to go to downloads and I'm going to select the new executable that I had just got done downloading. I'm gonna click add and then notice I can launch this executable. Let's see if it'll launch. Fantastic, it says, please select the language. English is fine. I'm gonna hit next, I agree. Notice how this looks exactly like a Windows executable application. Very good, we can even create a shortcut on the desktop. I'm gonna hit install and then I'm going to run Notepad++. Finish and look at that. I can officially make changes directly in this notepad. Fantastic work. You've installed a Windows executable directly with bottles at this point. Let's just make sure things are working. I'm gonna hit file, save as, and I'm gonna call this change.txt, sure. Notice how I do have a desktop with my computer. And interestingly enough, it looks much like a Windows file system, which is great. I'm just gonna save it in documents, hitting save, and then I'm gonna exit out of the program just like I normally do. Now that we've installed things here, we don't need the installer anymore. We can actually choose to remove it from the list. That way it doesn't show up here. But what will happen after a refresh is Notepad++ will show up and I can actually launch this at any time I want directly from bottles and open up whatever I want from
from my local Windows file system. Now do understand that they do create a containerized Windows file system for you. If you need to look through it, you can go up here to the three dots and hit browse files. This will launch in your native file browser on Linux, but notice that it has files directly related to Windows. For example, if I go to users, savvy Nick, in my documents folder, I should find that change.txt. Fantastic, that's just something to keep in mind. And that's only a part of bottle one. If I made a second bottle, those two paths should not cross. And that's one of the most fantastic things about bottles here is that you can actually create snapshots. Look at this right here. Let's say you're at a very good spot where you have things properly installed, some Windows applications, you don't wanna lose them or mess something up. You can create a snapshot and always go back to it. You just add a short comment. I'm gonna call it snapshot one, hit enter, and that's it. Now I have a snapshot that I can revert to at any point in the future. And this is what I love about bottles. It just makes things seamless here on Linux when it comes to installing Windows applications, managing your libraries, managing your containers, and is an overall well thought out program. Other things that you can do is configure your settings for bottles, including display settings, performance settings, compatibility, and even snapshots. You can also install other dependencies for your bottle. We already created a snapshot and you can manage the running, the current running programs if you have any. Notice it has its own process list. Under the hood, it's using Wine here as a direct compatibility layer for Windows, meaning we're not emulating things here. We're directly translating Windows calls into a Linux subsystem, which makes things way more responsive. Fantastic work by the Bottles team. And of course, Wine. If you wanna use Wine, I also have a video on how to do that. You can check it out as well. I'll put a link in the description below. That's really it. Congrats on installing Bottles and using it. Let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.